Hello folks, how you doing? Scotty. So I had a number of questions on the Canon G7X Mark II and I thought I would get around to responding to a number of these questions because it seems like it's a really popular camera. And so the first question that I had was by Annetta P who asked the question and she basically says uh, I just bought this new camera and I'm new to photography and I have no idea how to use it. I would love to learn and take amazing pictures like you. Do you do step to step by step uh, tutorial stuff? Well, that's something I'm definitely going to get around to. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you for the great compliment on my own pictures uh, from the examples that I had shown. I think it was like street photography or something, just to show as an example of how you would use it. But the thing is, is that with regards to understanding photography, is there is three things you would have to understand of the operation of the camera which the three most important things is your ISO, your shutter speed and of course your aperture. So those are things that you do have to understand when it comes across to uh, photographing specific subjects um, and it just happens to be that within sports photography you do require um, perhaps a fast shutter speed for much of it and uh, Again, it really depends on the lens. And this is where something like this, you wouldn't really use this for, you know, professional use. So the next comment I had was by someone called Ala Turbo and he says, all the stills were shot in black and white. Can you be more moronic than that? The problem with that argument is the fact that within photography it is something about creativity. And there are a lot of people who photograph stuff in black and white and it just so happened to be that I was doing a photography project at the time with street photography and it required me to take the photographs that I had, which I actually do have in colour, however I converted to black and white. So the next comment I got was from a lassie called Yumi who says, why does it seem like the video footage of the people uh, we're in slow motion. The reason why I put the, the video more or less in slow motion of the people was basically just for my own creative effect. You don't have to, there's no set of rules saying you have to do this specific thing. Sometimes you could mix it up. It's really all about how you express yourself and, and show things creatively in video and I've seen some people's fantastic work um, it's nice to mix things up and you'll probably find that from certain videos that I have done in the past and, and do and uh, because part and parcel of photography you get a lot of video as well now and one of the things that you're kind of taught is that is this sort of three to five second rule where um, instead of boring people you show um, three to five seconds of one clip and it sn snips to another and it keeps people um, you know, intrigued of what's coming next and that's something that's all part and parcel of uh, what you see from uh, video creators. I think Casey Neistat's the perfect example of just that. He shows things that uh, is a very creative mindset and um, whether it's going from slow to fast to, you know, changing of the angles and everything and, and that's something that really captures the eye. So the next comment I got was from Andreas Thompson who is from Denmark who was saying about um, I'm looking for a camera it's stepped up from the iPhone 7 he says I'm going to California with my girlfriend so looking for something for vacation and when I'm on trip could this be a camera that's a great bet for me and yeah I would say that because at the end of the day the DSLR cameras whether a crop sensor or a full frame camera it's a lot more expensive. Really when it comes to a DSLR such as a crop sensor body uh, someone would get that if they're going into studying and, and starting off in photography and it's the cheapest bet and I still use my crop sensor but this is the thing I mean you would pay a lot of money for these type of cameras uh, and the lenses and um, it's one of these things that um, for something that's small and compact and, and so versatile as the G7X Mark II, this is fantastic for someone who's just going out taking pictures and is going on holiday and it's on the go. It does have its limits, such as for example the aperture at the narrowest end uh, only shuts down to f11 
um, in the widest aperture being f1.8, but f1.8 is still, you know, really good for um, photographing a uh, portraiture. And again, this is something I'll go into and explain about the, the aperture and things like that. Again, one of the negatives I would say is the ISO. Um, once you reach about 800 ISO, usually you would use that for something indoors or something, but usually when you reach about 800 ISO, uh, you start to see a lot more grain noise, but again, you only get what you pay for, uh, for how versatile it is, and, and uh, you know, it takes fantastic images to be honest with you, and so long as you find light, and, and use light to your best advantage, light's your best friend in photography, so so long as you use that, you're going to get the best images out of it anyway. So the next question I get asked was by Ziza F only. And the person asked, Hi Scott, I'm thinking to get this camera on hand primarily for Instagram pictures and taking uh, photos of my models with the makeup I've done. Do you think this camera will do a good job? Because I, I, I can't really think of, if you're talking about something studio use or maybe you're talking about just a, a picture that's pretty decent, that's not really using so much flash, um, that, that, that's good enough just to show someone's makeup, and, and perhaps you've, let's say for example, you've got a, a model who just so happens to be sitting next to one of these uh, sort of mirrors that's got these sort of lights around it and the lights reflecting off that side of the face maybe you've got a window that's coming through and and, and you know brightening up that side of the face or whatnot <laughs> all of these things uh, you have to take into consideration but for someone who may use flash I would recommend getting a DSLR crop sensor body and investing in um, cheap flash units speed lights and getting to understand how to use those. This is an interesting question by Jordi Ball. I think that's Jordi Ball. <laughs> I, I, I apologise if I pronounced it wrong. Anyway, the question he asks is a quick question for you, Scott. Regarding the aperture, are you able to be at any focal length and still reach an f1.8 aperture? Now, from this question, the answer to that is actually no. Because if you, you know, zoom in to a, a focal length of, let's say, you zoom right into its maximum, which is, I think, 100 millimetres, what you find is when you zoom in, that I think the widest your aperture can open up to would be f2.8. Two or f2.8 I can't quite remember but I know that your aperture your widest aperture when you zoom in is less than what it would be at f1.8 so you, ha you end up with an, a slightly narrower aperture now a wide aperture is at 1.8 and the narrow aperture is stopping down um, in, in increments, again this is something I can show in demonstration when I do explain more about the aperture but all you need to understand is that when you zoom in you're going to, you're going to have a, a less stop of light in terms of your aperture and that's slightly uh, a slight disadvantage and therefore you'd be kind of forced to compensate by using a slightly higher ISO Continuing on, he says, or is it the aperture limited to the focal length? Also, do you think it's worth if I sell my D5300 and buy this camera? I feel like my uh, D5300 uh, is, is a bit bulky. Well, there's the thing. It depends on what you would use the camera for. Are you someone who is looking to use it professionally? Are you someone who's uh, just a hobbyist that just likes to go and take pictures on the go? And you're, you're not really that fussed over uh, things like flash, etc. And you, you feel that you could get a decent thing out of it. I can tell you this, and this is a wee bit of a trick. Uh, you know, it's just a wee thing. Even with a camera like that, right? Even with a camera like that, there's nothing stopping you that even if you've got the flash on it, 
you could perhaps use a torch or something or some um you know lamp or whatnot and use it independently and fire off uh using continuous light um but that's the only thing um there is this, the the slight disadvantage with a camera like that so it depends i mean if you're really bothered about the fact that it's bulky then of course you might favor something like that but the disadvantage is that your Nikon body, um, I would probably say, might uh, be better in terms of how it holds the ISO. In other words, you might get away with using a higher ISO using your DSLR body and therefore it really um, comes down to um, what you're, you're, you're willing to um, go for. Are you willing to compensate for that uh, and and go with something that's lighter and compact and, and just useful for on the go? So it really depends on what people are going to use it for.